What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What an awesome God. What an awesome God.
on the top. Anybody got a testimony this morning? This is called the Jesus Jam. Okay. This is a 100% crowd participation song. Okay. You might heard it before in this church. Uh, sung by, sung and written by Minister Al Matlock, I believe. Okay. Yep. All right, come on, I need y'all, I need y'all saints. Come on. All right, all right. <laughs> Jesus, just repeat after me. Jesus, everybody say Jesus. Jesus, come on. Jesus, 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 say Alpha and Omega, say Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, beginning and the end, the first and the last, the first and the last, the future and the past, the future and the past.
Lord with me. Yes. Amen. Come on and bless the Lord. Oh, that was kind of weak. Come on and bless the Lord with me. Amen. 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 Thing. Like I said, we've got a little, <laughs> little, uh, little time left. Amen. Amen. We've got to go and do our thing and over here at, at First Baptist. So I don't want to hold you too long. Amen. 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 But I do want you to just turn with me uh, back to the letter of Paul to the Romans. And the eighth chapter of that letter. All right. Amen. Amen. The eighth chapter of Romans. And we're just going to lift up that 38th through 39th verse to lead us into our lesson for our young people. Amen. Amen. Everybody hear me okay? Right, I'm not too loud, am I? No, all right. All right, I don't want nobody to be uncomfortable. Amen. 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 The eighth chapter of Romans, and uh, verse 37 through 39. And this is how it reads. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Okay, none of this stuff separates us. We can get separated from family. We can get separated from wives, husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, but nothing shall be able to separate us. We can get separated from the state of New Jersey. We can get separated from our job. We can get separated... Amen? Amen? But nothing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Amen. Christ Amen. Jesus. I just want to preach today just for a little while for my, my, my young people. Amen? I'll be working for you, young people. I'll be, I'll be working for you. I sit there and I have to think about you and then I got to think about the word and then I got to think about you and then I got to think about the word. Sometimes I got to look stuff up because I don't know all the lingo anymore. You know what I mean? I'm getting old. I don't know all that stuff. I got to look some of that stuff up sometimes. Amen. And, and all that kind of stuff. But today I just want to preach for a little while. God's got Wi-Fi. Stay connected. God's got Wi-Fi. Stay connected. Amen. And like I said, some of y'all Old folk, y'all ain't gonna understand Wi-Fi. You, you ain't never gonna understand Bluetooth. You ain't never gonna understand FaceTime or none of that stuff. But y'all just hang with me, and maybe the word of God uh, will 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 spill over, and you'll catch something. Amen. Pray with me, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus. I ask right now that you continue to dwell in this place in the form of your precious Holy Spirit. I ask, Lord, that you would move among your people and have thine own way. Lord, I ask right now that you open the hearts and the minds of this waiting congregation that they might receive the word that you have deposited into your servant's spirit. Lord, I furthermore pray that you would take me and hide me behind the shadow of the cross. That they might not see me but Christ in me. Bless somebody's soul. Cleanse and make them whole. In the matchless name of Jesus Christ, I do pray. Amen. 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 I was 
slipped a note this morning. A very proud guardian. And the note said that a young man was going to be graduating and had obtained a scholarship. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. Something to be proud about. Yeah. I'm proud of Xavier. Mm. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Whether he knows it or not, or whether he understands it or not, I love him and have been praying for him for years. Amen. Amen. But as graduation gets closer, And you start to get excited about the prospect of leaving home, being on your own. Ain't nobody watching me. Stay out late as I want to stay out. Hang out with who I want to hang out with. I'm going to tell you something. That excitement of being on your own don't last long. See, see, graduation and uh, for young people is a pivotal point in their lives uh, when you move from one experience and you begin to experience something new. Mm. Am I right? Yeah. Some of us remember our graduation. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're 18 years old. Mm. Yeah. Can't nobody tell me what to do no more. Yeah. I can do what I want to do. Yeah. The state of New Jersey say when I get 18, uh -huh. I can do what I want to do. Don't get happy with it, because back in my day, all you had to be is 18, and you can go in the bar. Uh -huh. yeah. You know I thought I was bad. <laughs> Amen? All you had to be is 18, and you could go anywhere you wanted and do anything you wanted to do back then. Now they, 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 they've raised it to 21. Uh -huh. Again. Because, uh, 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 but a lot of us believe that after 18 we graduate. All right. Mm -hmm. Before we graduate, to that magic number, we've been under the scrutiny of our parents. Mm -hmm. All right. Those of us that had good parents, we've been under the scrutiny of our parents. What time we leave? Mm -hmm. What time we come in? Right. Who we with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how long we with them? Right. For a time, that scrutiny was tough. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm meant that they bought you clothes. Mm -hmm. They scheduled your leisure activities. Amen. Mm -hmm. If you had to go to soccer practice, they took you there. Mm -hmm. Ain't no skipping out and, and trying to go a different direction after basketball practice because they're going to be there to pick you up. Amen? Amen. Mm -hmm. they, they, they decided what school you went to, mm -hmm. what church you went to, what friends you could hang out with and those you could not hang out with. They decided where you traveled on your vacation and, and, and when you went there on vacation. For all those 18 years. Now you about to graduate. Be on your own. Do your own thing. Amen. Amen. And you're going to go out and you figure you're going to do everything you big. And bad enough to do. Am I right about it? A lot of young people see uh, uh, the first 18 years of their lives as being similar to a prison sentence. Mm. Amen? Amen? Or at least a house arrest. Without the ankle bracelet. Amen? They start to yearn for graduation. To grow up. Because it's going to allow them to be free. Mm -hmm. Select their own clothes. Mm -hmm. Wear their skirt as short as they want to. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wear their pants as low as they want to. Right. Go out with friends anytime they want to. Mm -hmm. Go to church if they want to. Mm -hmm. Just exercise general independence. Am I right about it? General. Huh? Now, that idea sounds good, right, right. but it loses its excitement when you get out there and recognize that 
Complete independence means you got to pay your own bills. Amen. Complete independence means you got to pay your own bills. You got to buy your own clothes. You got to find a way to get where you want to get to. Ain't nobody to pick you up. There's nobody to drop you off. There's nobody that's gonna drop the 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 brand new uh uh, uh the the brand new Nikes. Uh, uh, in your hand. There's nobody that's going to give you them dollars to get to the mall. Complete independence. Right. Uh, what somebody told, what somebody said one time, freedom ain't free. You got to pay to be grown. You got to pay to be an adult. You got to pay to have your own way and do what you want to do. Amen? Am I right about it? And for that reason, a lot of young people, they desire to get away from home, but they don't want to go too far. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 they don't want to go too far. Right. It, it ain't no reason to be trying to go out to Stanford. It's a good school. I can go to Trenton State. Amen. <laughs> I can go to New Jersey State. <laughs> and I can still have access to mama's washing machine. Right, right. I can still have access to all the comforts of home. Amen. Without paying for it. Amen. And that's the challenge, young people, for for all young adults. To stay connected. You want to stay connected. To your roots. Mm. Right, right. Now, in the past, it wasn't so easy to stay connected. Mm. Am I right? right? You had a variety of ways and all kind of ways that we tried over the years to stay connected, to hear a word from somebody that we love, or, right. or to get help from somebody that we needed help from. Mm -hmm. Those of us that that lived a, 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 a long, long, long 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 time ago <laughs> if we needed to get a message to somebody we sent out home in pictures <laughs> uh, we tie a little piece of paper to the leg of the pigeon and we'd send that pigeon off and that pigeon would fly and fly and eventually somebody would get the message Nobody would. then they pull another pigeon out the cage and they put a the answer to your message on that pigeon and that pigeon would fly and fly until he got the message across. Amen? Amen. Oh, God. Amen. <laughs> Back in the day, I know a lot of y'all don't believe this, but we actually wrote letters. Yeah. You had to take the letter, and then you wrote the letter. Right. And then you put it in the envelope. Uh -huh. And then you had to take it downtown to the post office yeah. and get a stamp and put on it. Yeah. That's three days. <laughs> then you put the letter in the, the mailbox. Amen? And the letter goes off. Right. And according to how far away it was, uh -huh. it might take two more days for the letter to get there. Am I right about it? Uh -huh. So that message that you wanted to tell somebody about the fact that you just had a brand new baby, the baby's already five days old and you home from the hospital already before grandma will get the message. Am I right about it? And, 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 and if you lived out in the country, what they call them rural communities now. I, I ain't trying to upset nobody. I ain't trying to, I, I, I ain't trying to insult nobody. But if, if you lived out in the, in the rural areas, you had big, gigantic, bells that people rang. Uh -huh. They rang bells to let the folk know that it was time to go to church. Right, right. They rang bells to let the folk know that it was time to go to school. Right. If there was a fire somewhere, they rang the bell. Amen? And folk from miles around would start ringing one bell and then somebody else would ring another bell. By the time they got there, your house was burned down. <laughs> Amen? Then we got fancy. We invented the telegraph. And the telegraph sent little messages on, uh, 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 on a wire and then reprinted them on another little piece of paper on the other end. And, the bench, and, and, and that was a little bit faster. Amen? Then you had the invention of the telephone and it allowed us to really be connected. Sometimes it, it, the phones were so rare that folk had to share a phone. 
Yeah, yeah, somebody know what I'm talking about. I got some folk in here. It had the party line. Yeah. Uh -huh. It meant your phone, but it's also your neighbor phone. Oh, yeah. So you got to watch what you say, because you never know. There might be a neighbor listening in on your conversation on the party line. Amen? Amen. But then, in 1996, there was a turnaround in communication. Invented the cell phone. They had cell phones before then, but in order to use a cell phone, you had to carry a big briefcase. Then you had to open it up, and then you had to set up the, 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 the antenna, and then the phone was about this big. Amen. And, 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 and you could make that phone call, but only the very wealthy had one. But in 1996, uh, cell phones became available to the general public. Am I right about it? Somebody remember? And everybody had a cell phone. Well, before then, we had beepers. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody remember those? Yeah. Yeah. You had a beeper, and the beeper would beep, and, uh -huh. and you thought you was bad. You know, you, you thought you was bad. You'd be out somewhere, you know, hanging out and whatnot. Your beeper go off, and you could look important, and you had to uh -huh. run to the phone. Yeah. Had to find a pay phone somewhere. Right. Find some change. Yes, and then you could make the phone call. Amen? Uh -huh. And you could send little messages on the on the, on the beeper, you know, if it was an emergency, you know, you could put 911 in there or something like that, amen? Or if you had some kind of code to let it know that it was your girlfriend or something. <laughs> Somebody remember what I'm talking about? <laughs> but when the cell phone came out and everybody began to use it, 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 it revolutionized communication. Wow. And the cell phone eventually went from not just being a uh, cell service, but they began to use what they call Wi-Fi mm. service. And Wi-Fi was used uh, 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 by cell phones, and it was something that computer people in the business called IEEE -E -E 802.11 period one one protocol. But they shortened that up so that everybody could understand it and it was quick and easy to say and they just called it Wi-Fi. Okay. Amen? Amen. Now, if you had Wi-Fi, uh -huh. the world is at your fingertips. Oh, wow. Amen? Amen? With Wi-Fi, you can connect to your friends. You can go on Facebook. You can go on Instagram. You can go on Snapchat. With Wi-Fi, you can send and receive messages in an instant. I don't have to wait. Amen? Wow. I send it to you, and in a couple seconds later, you send me an answer back. Amen? Wow. You can watch live videos. You can watch YouTube. You can even watch live TV. And if you have Wi-Fi, you can shop. You can study. You can see the world anywhere, anywhere. Wow. without Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. no matter how beautiful your phone is, <laughs> you can have one of them thousand dollar Apple phones, uh -huh. it ain't worth nothing. <laughs> and the challenge for young people is that as you make the next step, not to lose your connection with God mm -hmm. and family and to resist the temptation to get hooked up with people, places, and things that's going to make you lose your signal. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And since the, the word Wi-Fi doesn't really have any real meaning other than being connected, the spiritual Wi-Fi could mean being connected to God. Amen. Make sure that you remain spiritually connected should be an important concern of any graduate, Amen. of anybody that's moving on in their life, Amen. any young person that thinks that they are at a point where they want to be grown now, staying connected to God is one of the most important things. Amen. It's rare when a believer is not associated with the things of God. Amen. If you truly believe, you're going to hook up with God. If you truly believe, you're going to make sure you got a connection with God. If you see the praise team performing on next Sunday, 
Look for a believer to be in the crowd. Amen. Look for a believer to be in there dancing and, 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 and praising the Lord. If, if, if you see a crowd of young people praising God, look for a believer to be in the midst of that crowd. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. If the church is celebrating Youth Sunday and, and the young people are leading the service, look for somebody that believes to be in that crowd. Yes, sir. Right. As a matter of fact, if you're a believer, you're so connected that you feel kind of strange on Sunday morning if you're not in church. All right. Am I right about it? Because right. see, we're so connected that we hitch our ride, we hitch a ride, and we catch buses, and 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 we take cabs, and some of us even walk just to be in the presence of the Lord, just to be connected with the. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about today. I want to be connected to God. Yes. You know, I, I recognize young people that you're moving to different levels. You're starting to think in new ways. Uh, different things are starting to become important to you. And you're basically moving from one level of life to another. You're becoming adults. Our relationship and connection with God and the things of God shouldn't go down just because you grow up. Right. But you should strengthen that bond day to day. You're going to need Him more than ever yes. as you move out on your own. Yes. Uh, what I want you to understand today and the message that I'm just trying to get to you today is that you ought to be on a quest to find some godly Wi-Fi wherever you go in this world. I don't care what college you go to, what job you go to, what state you go to. The first thing you ought to be doing is trying to find somewhere where you can hook up with some godly Wi-Fi. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let me give you some Bible. The, the scripture that we're looking out at comes from a man named Paul. And Paul is writing this letter to individuals in Rome, Italy. And the Romans, and he, he, he tries to encourage them to stay focused and not to lose their relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Paul traveled around the known world at the time. And uh, three times he did this, setting up churches and different things. And as he moved from one place to another, he met all kind of obstacles. He came into all kind of challenges, just like you're going to, young people. He came into all kind of circumstances that confused him and befuddled him wherever he went, just like you're going to. Amen? But one thing he did not do was lose focus with his original purpose, which was to help build the kingdom of God. No matter where he went, he maintained his focus and stayed connected with God. And although Paul went to school, he was a scholar. He spoke many languages and was well versed in the religious scholarship of his day. He told the Philippians, I count not myself to have apprehended. In other words, he said, I don't care what school I go to. I don't care what degree I have. I don't get the big head because I know if it had not been for the Lord yes, that was on my side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead, Without the Holy Spirit and his connection to God, he couldn't do anything. Paul just stayed focused on his goal. When you get out there in the world, there's going to be a lot of things that try to pull you away. There are going to be a lot of people that try to pull you in different directions. If you don't have your goal focused in your mind, you're going to get tripped up and lose your connection. You're going to get tripped up and you're going to lose your power. He chose to focus on the future and not the past. He said, I press towards the mark of the prize of the high call. I heard a psalm that say, listen, Young people, I don't care where you go. You got to remember that the Lord is always taking care of you and he's going to take care of you. Amen. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, I see begging bread. Paul knew where he wanted to go. You got to figure out where you want to go. He knew he needed God's power though to get there. He encouraged the folk not to let anything break their connection with God. 
He asked them in Romans 8 and 35, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress or persecution, or famine or nakedness or peril, or even swore? Then he answered and he said, Nay. In all these things, my Wi-Fi is still... Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. In all these things, my connection is still. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ that loved us. Amen. Encourage these folk to go forward with determination and not only build their lives, but build the kingdom of God. Why are you going to get what you're going to get? Why are you going to try to be successful? Don't forget to build the kingdom of God along yes. the way. Amen. 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 His goal in life was set. It was clear. Mm -hmm. He had decided that he was going to be a witness for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't turning back. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. So young people today... I just stop by to remind you that as you go forward and we start to hasten our way to summer, mm -hmm. some of you are going to be going one way and some of you are going to be going another way. Mm -hmm. I want you to continue to live a connected life. Yes, Because yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. it's important to be connected to God. Mm -hmm. And no believer wants to stay unconnected, mm -hmm. if possible. Mm -hmm. And four things I just want to share with you today that I was thinking about. I told y'all I was thinking about y'all. Amen? Amen. The, there's some rules that you got to follow if you're going to stay connected to God's Wi-Fi. All right. All right. First thing you got to do, you got to be in range of the network. Okay. If you're going to attempt to connect to a Wi-Fi connection, uh -huh. you click on the icon on your phone. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Or you're on your, your laptop or your, your tablet or whatever. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be instantly notified that there's a network in the area. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and you're going to have to choose. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Now, if you are used to using Wi-Fi uh -huh. and you don't have a cell phone connection, man, it breaks your heart. If you find out they don't have Wi-Fi. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen? <laughs> this poses a problem. I mean, this is an issue. I don't I don't really want to eat in a restaurant that don't have... Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. I, I, I don't want to hang out in no store, no mall that don't have no Wi-Fi. Uh, you got to make sure that there's some... some some God in the people and the places that you go and the things that you do. You got to make sure that there's a connection there. Yes. Amen. 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 Am I about to associate with some people that that are not connected to what? Uh -uh. Am I about to do some things that 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 have no God in them? No, no. no. Am I about to participate in some godless? And no, no. Young people, I'm trying to encourage you today to stay within a network of people, in a network of places, in a network of things that can keep you connected to God. See, because every now and then you're gonna go places, and there gonna be connections available. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, some of y'all, when you come into church, you can connect. Oh, yes, we got free Wi-Fi here. All you got to do is get the password. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're going to get some connections that are available, but, but they ain't your connection. Come on, talk. A lot of times when you connect to your phone, you see this long list of, of available networks and they got all kind of usernames on them and all kind of things like that. But only one of them is the one that you're looking for. Right. Yes, and as you go forward, a lot of folk going to want to connect with you girls. Yes, sir. But there ain't going to be no God in them. Yes, Talk about it, brother. A lot of folk going to want to connect with you guys. Mm -hmm. But there ain't no God in them. So you got to beware. Yes. The other times when you're connected, but you got a weak signal. Yes, sir. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. You look on your phone, you got a Wi-Fi connection, but the number of bars is so low it ain't worth nothing. Y'all yes, hear what I'm talking about? Yes, you can't go on YouTube with one bar. Yes, Amen. Yes, you can't you can't get no videos in with one bar. Yes, Amen. Yes, 
Okay. When you look on your phone, you got bars on. I'm trying to explain it to the other folk that don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you know, you got bars on there, and, and the number of bars lets you know how strong the Wi-Fi connection right, is. Right. Amen? Amen. Four or five bars mean that you really connected right. strong. Right. One bar means that you barely connected. You ain't gonna be able to do so much. Mm. What are spiritual bars? Come on now. Mm. Worship, Sorry, prayer. Yeah. Amen. Service to your God. Yeah. Study and giving. You can consider them your spiritual bars. Amen. And as we drop a bar, your connection weaken. Okay. Oh, you can drop prayer, but that's one bar. Yeah. And your connection to God is going to be weaker. Yes. Right. You can drop studying the Word of God. You've grown now. You can right. drop studying the Word of God, but your connection it's going to be, y'all don't get what I'm talking about. You drop a bar, you get weak. Some young folk walking around here with one bar. They come to church on Sunday. That's it. They don't want to serve nowhere. They don't want to do anything. They got one bar and they think that they're going to make it that way. It's easy to think that you're going to make it when your legs bounce up and down real easy. Right. When you can jump high and you can run fast. Good. It's easy to think that you can make it a long way when you can stay up late and still function the next day. It's easy to think that you can make it. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking yes. about. Yes. When your mind just holds everything in there and you can remember the next day and the next day what you talked about the other day. Sometimes I can't remember what I said. <laughs> Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. <laughs> It's easy to think that you can make it without God when you feel that way. But how many people know that when your legs start to get a little wobbly, when your back start to not stand up as straight as it used to, when you, when you start getting pains where you never had pains before, you realize that you need every bar that you can. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. Yes, sir. And you know, but that ain't the worst situation. The worst situation is when you had a connection right. and then for some reason you lost it <laughs> or you was talking right. but for some reason you lost the connection am I right about it? Yes, sir. and when you get to the position of having no bars it's guaranteed you ain't talking to nobody right. and in life if you find yourself in a position where there's a weak signal, you move from where you are until you find the signal. All right. All right. You get away from those people until you find the signal of God. Yes. You get away from that place where you find the signal of God. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Man. Deuteronomy 4.29 said, But from there you will seek the Lord your God, and you will find him if you seek him. Amen. And if you seek him with all your heart. If you want a signal from God, you can find it, young people. Yes. Then, you know what? You can get on Wi-Fi in a lot of places. But like I said, you got to have the access code. Am I right? Amen. You can have an available network. If you open your phone right now, you're going to find an available network right here. And it's a strong network. Amen? Amen. But you can't open it. Because you don't have the access code. I mean, that ain't no problem. I give you the access code. I ain't saying like a secret. Amen. But you gotta have the access code. And let me tell you something. The grace of God is free. Amen. But it does require an access code. The ungodly don't have the access code to the blessings that you young people have right. access to. The ungodly don't have the access code to the power that you young people have. Amen? Amen. Amen. The access code is very simple. It's basically one, two, three. One, obey. Mm. Obedience is required if you want to access the network of God. Yeah. You can't live in disobedience and expect him to hear you when you pray. Mm -hmm. Two, you got to submit to his will. Yes. You got to ask God for those things that are according to his will. Mm -hmm. I saw a show the other day, uh, 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 some young people, uh, they were getting ready to go on stage and do a, uh, 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 what do you call it, uh, 
uh, exotic, no, uh, exotic dancer contest or something like that. Mm -hmm. And they gathered together in the back room and, pray. and prayed. Mm -hmm. Lord, make me successful. You got to be in God's will. Amen. 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 I don't know about you, but it should be your desire to go in the direction that God wants you to go in. Amen. Yes. Then, three, you got to ask in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. You should always make your prayer request in Jesus' name. Yes. I'm not worthy and you're not worthy to ask God for anything. But Jesus is our mediator. Yes. He's our go-between. He ushers us into the throne of grace. And when you try to call on God without these three, you ain't got access. You're just trying to hack in. You're trying to hack into the throne of God. You're not obeying. You're not submitting. And you're not asking in the name of Jesus Christ. You're just trying to hack into heaven. No man gets in without him. Then lastly, listen, if Gonna be act, get access to God, young people. One of the most important things for you mm -hmm. is you gotta be a hot spot. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Amen. See, uh, some folks don't know what I'm talking about because they still got them flip phones. But that's all right. Y'all be all right. <laughs> <laughs> There's a unique feature on the phones nowadays. Amen. <laughs> and that's the ability to make your phone act as a hot spot. Yes, you, you know what I'm talking about? Yes. That, that means that you can allow other people to connect through your phone. Yes. Am I right? Yes. And for all your young life, young people, you've been accessing the blessings of God even though you didn't have your own connection. When you didn't have sense enough to connect on your own you were connecting through mama's hot spot. Yes. When you didn't have sense enough to pray for yourself, mm -hmm. you were connecting through daddy's hot spot. Yes. But now you're old enough. All right. And you're challenged to become a hot spot. Mm -hmm. You're going to move among friends and you're going to move among roommates and you're going to move among dorm mates and associates. You're going to move among people that don't know the Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. Talk about it. But God is challenging you to help them find the way to the Lord. All right. All right. They may not know how to pray, mm -hmm. but let them see you pray. Mm -hmm. They may not know how to worship, right. yeah. but invite them to worship with you. Yes. Yes. They may not serve God, mm -hmm. but let them see you serving God's purposes. Right. And that way you can lead them to a godly life. Your enthusiasm for the Lord, your excitement for the Lord, your commitment for the Lord will be a hot spot in a dorm room somewhere, will be a hot spot in a cafeteria somewhere, will be a hot spot on a soccer team somewhere. Your enthusiasm for the Lord will be a hot spot for somebody. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. You're challenged to be a hot spot. But listen, I got to let you go. But no matter how connected we are, it don't matter if you don't get your phone charged up. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. It doesn't matter how beautiful your phone is, or how much you pay for it, or what it's worth to you. It ain't worth a dime if it ain't charged. Y'all don't hear what I'm talking about. You know the diamond rose iPhone? comes with 500 diamonds and sells for eight million dollars mm -hmm. but it ain't worth a penny if it ain't charged yeah. you know the goldfish million is listed as one of the most expensive cell phones on the market in the world by the guinness book of world records but it ain't worth a dime if it ain't charged. Right, you know the diamond crypto smartphone has 40 white diamonds and 10 blue diamonds and sell for 1.3 million dollars but it ain't worth a dime if you lost and it ain't charged up That's right. young people as you go forth into the world they say even as you go on off to college 
you got to go forth with a fire and enthusiasm Amen. that reflects the confidence that you have. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Yeah. If you get charged up, constantly study, yes. pray, pray, serve, yes. give to the building of the kingdom. Yeah. If you get charged up, you ought to be all right out there because all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Because when you get charged up and you get fully connected, you know that God is speaking to your situation. It don't matter that you're young. If it is his will, God is able to give you what you want and what you request. My God can speak to your doubts and turn them into security. My God can speak to your fears and turn them to confidence. My God can speak to your failures and turn them into success. My God can speak to your brokenness and turn it into prosperity. My God can speak to your enemies and turn them into your friends. It's important to have a connection. If your phone is lost or stolen, you can log into somebody else's phone and press find my phone and it'll tell you exactly where your phone is. It's important to have a spiritual connection because you might get lost as you travel through this world, but God can push, find my child, and the Holy Spirit will show up and bring you home. It's important to have Wi-Fi because with the right app, you can get text messages and FaceTime and even phone calls when your account run out of money. If you got Wi-Fi connection with God, you might be on your sick bed and you can't come to church. You might not be able to get in touch with a deacon. You might not be able to get in touch with a preacher. You might be on the highway driving in your car. But because you got a connection, you can call him up. I heard somebody say, Jesus on the main line. Tell you what you want. You can call him up. You know what? I want you to understand something. Before I go on my way, if you walk in the church, you can hook up with the Wi-Fi. It don't cost you nothing. The connection is free. And when you go to the mall, you might be able to hook up on the Wi-Fi. The connection is free. You got folk that sit outside McDonald's and hook up on Wi-Fi because the connection is free. You don't have to pay no bill. You may be able to connect in the restaurant. You may be able to connect in the hotel and they don't charge you. But what I want you to know today, young people, somebody paid the price for your wife. God is trying to speak to the generation, but he never seemed to make a connection. Down in Bethlehem, God started a connection. Down in Bethlehem, he sent his son, born of a virgin, ready to make a connection with Jesus. Got baptized in the Jordan River. God said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. He tried to get a connection when a blind man got the sight, when a lame man walked. God said, can you hear me now? People still can't make a connection. What makes your cell phone connect to the transmitter? It's because it's lifted up on top of an iPhone. Anybody that gets close to the transmitter up on the pole gets a connection. But I heard Jesus say, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men, a 
in trouble. I'm going to call him up. Jesus on the main line. Tell him what you want. right now. Amen. You know, you don't realize it, but your life don't have to be the way it is. Amen. Things can change for you. Yes, sir. Look at me. God turned it around. Right. Thank you, Lord. Just some bum dude walking up and down Stuyvesant Avenue, hanging out on the corner of Stuyvesant and Hall. But I got connected to Jesus. And it didn't turn out like it could have. Would there be one today that wants to give Jesus an opportunity? You done tried everything else. You done tried people. You done tried places. You done tried things. And none of them worked out for you. All you got to do is come forward. Give this deacon your hand. Give God your heart. I'm telling you, at that instant, things will begin to change for you. Yes. Would it be one? Would it be one today? Come on, come on, come on. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen. Young people, I came and did my best to try to encourage you today because I love you. You know, I, there's a lot more adults here than, than it is you. And if I cared 
more about what they thought than your soul, then I probably would have preached something like the whole ship of Zion or something like that. <laughs> Amen. But I want you to be saved. I want you to make sure that you got your thing right. Listen, at this time, we just want you to give us a couple more minutes. We're going to bring the palms down. Amen. We want the deacons to come forward. We're going to bless the palms. We're going to distribute the palms. We want you to take them out. We want you to place them where you can see them. So that you can remember what the Lord did for you. On that faithful palms. Come on down front, fellas. Line up in front. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I ask right now that you forgive us our sins, which required you to go into Jerusalem and to sacrifice your life for us. Right now, Lord, I ask you to bless these palms, Lord. Let them be a blessing. Give uh, them the, the power, Lord, to bring somebody's remembrance to the sacrifice that you've given. Let them be a blessing wherever they're placed, Lord, in the home, in the car, in the child's bedroom, wherever they're placed, Lord. Let it be a blessing, a blessing of faith in what you are, who you are, and what you can do. Bless us now as we go into the most holy of Easter seasons. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. Listen, oh, I'm going to give the benediction. Amen. All right. And then we can give out the palms. We're going to walk around. Please don't leave right away. Uh, we want you to get a palm. Amen. amen. Father God, we thank you for what our eyes have seen. We thank you for what our ears have heard, what our hearts have felt. Bless this congregation, Lord, wherever they may go. Let them be a blessing to others also. Touch these young people. Continue to give them the spirit to serve you. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen and amen. I'm grateful.